Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of A Comedy Advice Podcast. My name is Stefan Satani, and I am your host. Joining me today, a uh, very special guest. His brothers may cook food, but he cooks up laughs. He's been an esteemed actor that's graced the screen in Rescue Me, Nurse Jackie, Top Gear, Why Women Kill, recently Dogs Playing Poker, and so much more. And he is an extremely amazing comedian that has appeared on Comedy Central, was nominated twice for Best Male Stand-Up, and has a new album out now. It's scary in here. Oh, and he's also a podcaster. He's the host of the 30 Minutes You'll Never Get Back with Adam Ferrara. Everybody, welcome Adam Ferrara. How are you, Steph? And now let me, may I ask, because this is the first time we're, we're meeting virtually, and I, I, I thank you for inviting me over. Oh, uh, absolutely. Did it start out as Stephen and Stefan is your dancing name? Or <laughs> I did do a, yeah, I did do a rebrand in sixth grade. So right. I was Steven, but everybody started calling me Stefan. And then mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Lady Gaga did it. Why can't I? And you. so in the I sixth went... grade, you did it, you visionary. <laughs> yeah. Look at you. <laughs> so I tried. And then um, everybody started calling me Steven because it was the spelling is phonetically ambiguous, I think. So right. you can go Steven or Stefan. But okay. Uh, yeah. I Very, uh, very keen on that. Yeah. Very Thank you. I, I, please address me as Adam. <laughs> I'm oh, I love a dom. That's beautiful. Yeah. I, want, I want to be fluid and ambiguous as well. It's a sign of the time. <laughs> That's amazing. And I I know you're Italian American. I know yes. Ferrara, the uh that that it, amongst it's actually a Ferrara is actually a town. If you go to Florence and hang a left, there's a town called Ferrara. A lot of blacksmiths are in there. I lived there. You did? I did. Where? Yeah. Yeah. 125th Street and Lenox Avenue. Where were you? That was it. <laughs> I, yeah, I was on the pizza joint. <laughs> no, I, I, where'd you tell, <laughs> tell me? I've never been. I saw it on a map. Oh man, it's beautiful. So uh, they're trying to historically preserve the city, so you can't right. drive there unless you actually live there. So I ended up studying abroad, and I stayed there for about six months. And mm -hmm. I lived with the family, and I rode on a bike that I'm six four and about two hundred pounds, and the bike. Well, I, I, I called it Sea Biscuit because it was like right. five times too small for me. So I was riding around. It was also this beautiful neon green that transitioned horribly into like a neon orange. So I'd okay. ride that thing all around. It's like and, a Lamborghini. Uh, they're, they're loud and tacky, but they're fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And then um, I, I also rebranded in Italy to Stefano. So I was, you know. It's great. Yeah. I, I, I like you can call it rebranding. Most people call it running from a subpoena, but not you. <laughs> I'm rebranding, Your Honor. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, but anyway, wanted wanted to talk about you, the special guest. You I, after I mean, I've seen you on Comedy Central. I've seen your special. I just listened to your new album, which Thank is you. absolutely phenomenal, and wanted to talk to talk about it in just a second. But also listening to you on interviews, your podcast, mm -hmm. and everything, I didn't realize how darn cool you are. Just way to you, Stefan Stefano or Steve. I, I I love I love all your personalities. <laughs> oh my god. The, the Steven one is a little boring. I start to okay. talk about the history of Ferrara and things like that, but Stefan's <laughs> a little cooler. Um, he'll make some spaghetti and stuff. But um St Stefano, he wants to talk about just how cool you are and the language that you use that I think is super cool in your album. You were using things like sweep the leg, and then in an episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think with uh, an episode of your podcast, I think it was the one with Kevin James, which right. was a phenomenal episode. You guys were talking about how, oh, let's take a step back, talk sure. about the beauty and structure of your podcast, which I would call like a laugh sandwich, oh, where, that... yeah, yeah, it's like you and your wife, Alex, and your mm -hmm. friend, Phil, and mm -hmm. Mark, right. and you guys chat a little bit about your interview that comes up with the guest. Mm hmm then the interview comes up. Then you guys talk a little bit about it afterwards. Yeah. Which is- Thank you. Is, well, well, well uh, uh, Stephen, thank you for noticing the structure of it. I, basically, here's what happened. When I sat down to do something, I wanted to do something. And I was like, okay. Yeah. There's so many guys that do a great straight interview show. Uh, yeah. And I was like, you know, I, we already have that. So it's, it's uh, like my friend Mark, see? Marin does a great one. And I got nice. him up. Nice. Um, <laughs> But uh, something I, what do I want to do? So I started with a feeling. I'm very visceral. You know, mm -hmm. if it's, it's uh, I'm, I'm right at this point in my life, I'm trying to cultivate a, fen a felt sense rather than relying on thought. Because, <laughs> you know, 
I don't, I, the mind's a terrible thing. So I, uh, I said, all right, let me start with this feeling. And the best feeling I had when I was a kid was uh, when I was upstairs and I heard my mom and dad and their friends downstairs laughing. Uh, and it always started with laughter and there was always some advice. My father was a loud guy and everybody would come to the house to hear his, yeah. his advice. He was, he, was like, he was like the Don in the neighborhood. You know, no one really, he just had that thing where he cared about people and he could, he could organize someone else's chaos or emotional chaos and just point them in the right direction. You know, mm. and people, people left being grateful for at least that glimmer of, or that, that way of looking at something that they couldn't see because they were in it. And I just, I did, wasn't consciously aware I was absorbing it, but by osmosis and my, my love for my dad, I guess that, that message got in. So I wanted mm -hmm. to communicate that feeling. So we start the show with about 10 minutes of a topic, talking about something that connects to the interview that I did, the one-on-one -on -one interview I did with a celebrity or somebody cool, yeah. somebody I want to talk to. And then like any good group of friends, Stefan, we, we talk about them when they leave. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> <laughs> and how does that affect your life? And how does it affect the listener? And how is that incident in his life a global message or... Uh, a, a warning or some some kind of thing that affects our lives that that can be passed on to the listeners. So that's pretty much it. Oh, and it's beautiful. And and you got a great group of friends and wife. And yeah. I remember I listened to a couple episodes recently, and one of them was with Joe List. And I think beforehand yeah. you were talking with your friend Phil, who mm -hmm. uh, sent you this beautiful recording of yeah. a video from I think it was West Wing. West Wing, yeah. A and uh, you didn't read it or you didn't see it because it was he like two video. minutes long. Here's the thing. He sent me a video. All right. The vid with no instructions, Stefan. And don't, don't, don't you take his side. He's in the middle of nowhere without any in the middle, middle of the week, middle of the day on a Wednesday, he's getting emotional. There was a scene on the West wing where Martin Sheen was talking to the designated survivor and Martin Sheen asked the, the designated survivor in case anything happens. Do you have a best friend? And the message was, is he smarter than you? Yes. Does he trust you with, do you trust him with your life? Yes. That's your chief of staff. So Phil, you know, the writer directed at Phil is recorded about a minute and a half to set the scene, the tone and everything. And on a random Wednesday, I get a clip. I got no time to read it, my, to watch it. I'm working. And the message that he wanted me to hear was 54 seconds in. So I had to text him later about something and he got offended that I didn't watch it because he went all out of his way to, to, to announce his <laughs> friendship and, and how he felt that we were best friends, which we are. We've known each other for 20 years. Uh, well, you know what? You're my guest, so I'm definitely taking your side. But right. even when he's my guest on the next episode, I'll take his right. side. But no, no, I, I think in I might be the type of person to send that clip. But right. I would also say like, hey, here's what this made me think of you or like yeah. some sort of heading. Something like some kind of instruction, some kind of uh, listen. I, it's like I always tell Phil when he does this stuff, I always go back to Churchill. Churchill had a great line when he was writing letters to people during the war. It's like, I'm sorry this is so long. I didn't have the time. <laughs> if you want someone to tell them what to do, give them instructions. It's like there's a reason my podcast has a pace to it, Stefan. It's because I am so grateful someone has taken the time to come and visit my house because that's what my podcast is. You're going to have a good time. I'm not going to waste your time. I'm not going to say we're going to do this. But first, it's like, you know, it's like when you watch a YouTube video for some kind of instruction or something, you right, know, right. I'm, going to show, I'm going to show you how to change the oil in this car. But first, <laughs> let me show you pictures of my vacation. Jesus, just get to where we get to it. I have shit to do. I got it's like when you were a kid and you had to go. You had you, you went to buy weed in the basement apartment of the weird kid in the neighborhood. You had to make believe you were friends for a half hour. So look, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to mess around. I just need a nickel bag to stop the screaming in my head. All right. I don't want to listen to the Neil Young album again. <laughs> oh my God. I, I'm, I'm right there with you, Adam. Yeah. Cause I feel like, you know what? And you see it too. It's exactly like the YouTube videos where they talk about if they're going to do the oil change, but then they're like, you know what? Wanted to show you my cat real quick. It's name yeah. is Steven, but I changed yeah. it to Stefan. And you, you're like, it's an Italian cat. It's Stefano. It doesn't drive. It doesn't ride a bike that's too small for him. It's a circus cat. That's basically what my life boils down to. Yeah. But to, to your podcast, I thought it was fantastic. And then also one episode you were talking about how you, uh, Mark, needed to, he checked in early or was trying to check in early. Mm -hmm. And you ended up successfully greasing the manager at oh, the yeah. Holiday Inn. 
And you uh, use the word, I, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't even know, I'm not a good grease person. I don't even know the term <laughs> for it. But, like, but you were like, yeah, I had it loaded. And you were telling the story of how you first learned about it. And I was just oh, like, yeah. oh my God, this is so cool. I need friends like these. Cause mine, <laughs> we're not talking about greasing people. Oh, so. uh, well, thank you. Just, just for your list is greasing doesn't mean you're killing a guy. All right. I just, you gotta, <laughs> that doesn't thank mean. you. Basically, you. I think it was, was it the Tony Kornheiser episode? I forget. I, I think Which I, there was an episode where Mark flew out here um, and we did uh, Mark is my producer on my show. Yes. Um, and so he flew out to do some, some episodes out here live. Uh, this was a while ago, you know, mm -hmm. you know, when things were different. So he came out here <laughs> and um, he got he had a hotel because he had he wanted a hotel room. He wanted but fine. Great. So we get to the hotel and you can't check in before noon. Yep. So the guy says, I'm sorry, we can't check in for one. I said, excuse me, let me take care of this. And I, I kind of knew it, you know, from hotels because I've been, I've been on the road as, for, as right. a comic for 20 years. I'm like, All right. So I loaded a 20 before we went in there. Basically, uh, when I was a kid, I played this, uh, I played this uh, comedy club in Brooklyn called Toppers. And the story was that all the wise guys came in on Friday night on the late show with their girlfriends. And if they liked the show, they came back the next early show on Saturday with the wives. <laughs> you, you don't say anything. There was a guy who ran the place would come into the back, into the green room. And Stefan, when I say green room, I mean the boiler room under the stairs. It wasn't any. <laughs> yeah. You want some water? Yeah, it's up there under the leaky pipe. Put the glass back when you're done. You know, that, that was the kind of accommodations we had. So Rocky, who ran the joint, would poke his head in on Saturday. And the code was, we got company. Don't say nothing about nothing. Which means the wise guys that were in with the girl with the with girlfriends on Friday came back on set with the white don't say nothing that you saw him before. Right. Okay. So I was on stage and I did this joke about um, my girlfriend yelling at me and turning into a pterodactyl. And I went, rah, rah, you know, this, this thing. Uh -huh. Well, the wise guy was sitting there and his girlfriend got up and went to the bathroom before I did the joke. She was this skyscraper blonde that just went to the bathroom and uh -huh. the guy did the joke and the guy laughed like, <laughs> and the girl came back and sat down and in the middle of the next, my next bit, when she sat down, the guy yelled out, do the bird joke again. <laughs> I was like, sir, I just, he goes, do the bird joke again. And I'm like, and I know who he was. I'm like, here's one of my favorites. Now I'm a fucking jukebox, Stefan. I'm, I am do the joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's you. Oh, stop it, Al. <laughs> right? So I walked out and the guy shook my hand. And he went, hey, you made me laugh. And he shook my hand. And in there was a totally, Stefan, it was a fold. It was origami. I don't know how the guy did it. It was a folded $100 oh God, bill yeah. in a square that you could see the, the hundred. You could see what it was. I don't know how the hell he uh -huh. did it. But it was, and he shook my hand, which meant I'm showing my gratitude, but nobody else has to know our business. So that's where I, I learned it. I, you know, the guy, he didn't grease me because I wasn't doing anything for him. It was, it was thank you. You know, it was a, it was a wise guy move. Nice. Always remembered that because I went, oh, and I put it in my pocket because I didn't want anybody to see it. Right. So when I when I when I knew we might have a problem, I just loaded 20 bucks in my a twenty dollar bill the same way. I didn't fold it as nicely, Stefan, but I had it loaded just in case we had problems. <laughs> so the guy the guy goes, I'm sorry, uh Mr. Stern, that was his name. We have your reservation, but yeah. you can't check in before noon. And uh so I, I leaned in and I went, I totally understand. And I do not, and I totally understand and I respect the policies of this hotel. Right. I would consider it, I would consider it a favor if you could just maybe find an open room for my friend. He just flew across the country. He's very tight and we have to work late. And any accommodations or, or, any, or anything you could do, I would greatly appreciate. What is your name? Dave? Dave, thank you very much. And I shook his hand and I had the 20 in there. Well, Dave doesn't know what's going. He turns it over and goes, what's this? I go, now it's evidence, you fuck. There's a camera right there. <laughs> What are you doing? Oh you, put my 20, God. you put the 20 in your pocket and you go, let me see what I can do, Mr. Ferrara. And you show him to a friggin' room. That's what you do. Right, right, exactly. Oh, oh man, I, he totally missed the memo. I had it covered. I go, I go, Dave, I go, oh, is that yours, Dave? I don't know where that came from because now I'm covering my <laughs> ass. I didn't realize how complicated a greasing is. No, it's it's, not, it's not supposed to be. Dave fucked it up, Stefan. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. The whole name of the process is greasing. It should yes. be going over smoothly. Makes things move squeak, cleaner, less squeaking. Here's a little oil for you. No one's oh, getting God. I pro I've never been greased before, but I feel I would probably be just like Dave if I saw it. I would totally pull a Steven and be like, oh, what's 
that did you drop this should yeah, i you, you've it, never been stefano would know what's going on that's right that's right yeah like i capiche i capiche there you go Ooh, look at the yeah. lira oh god <laughs> So, um, that, that was that was one story uh on the podcast but i thank you for listening because you know we do these things and and you get emails back from people but but you never you know when you can pinpoint something that we've done uh it makes me feel right. good so I'm, I'm glad that you listen thank you oh absolutely and then all of my listeners i'm going to encourage them to listen and put a link in the show notes for them to go follow so they could listen well, well. thank you because it's absolutely incredible you also do um uh, talk was it talk with me Tuesdays? Me Tuesday. live? Yeah, it's on Facebook Live. Uh, yeah, um, if you go to my website, click the link. It's nine o'clock Eastern, six p.m. Pacific. And basically, that started. I was on a show called uh, Top Gear, which was a car show, and it was on Tuesday nights. And uh, we used to live text with everybody. My wife and I would live text with everybody, right. and we had this little family. Uh, and so the show, uh, they didn't pick up the our contract for it, so the show went away. But I had these people I was talking to every night, so. I was shooting something. I forget what I was shooting. Uh, and then one Tuesday I came back and uh, there was a bunch of stuff on, on Twitter and, and Instagram. I'm like, we miss you. I'm like, we got to do something. And uh, so my wife came up with this idea. And it's basically, it's basically my wife holding a camera and we go live on Tuesday nights and it's thousands of people show up to watch my wife scold yeah. me. That's pretty much what it is. But in the most entertaining of ways. Yeah, we, we talk to people. I mean, we have people that come back every week uh, and share their lives with us. It's like a phone call with thousands of your friends. So it's 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 a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. I didn't get to experience it live, but I did see last week's as well. When you, you started it up, talking with the fans as things were going before you talked with Tanner, which was Tanner the Faust, other... who was on the on the show Top Gear with me. You know, he he'll That's call awesome. in once in a while. My friend, my crazy friend Phil from my podcast, will call in, bitching yeah. and moaning about something. Yeah. Uh, Rutledge Wood, who was on the show with me as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's whatever we're in the mood for. And if someone has like, you know, that we have a couple of fans of, can you say hi to my son and you wave and people, people get excited and it's not, it's nice. It's nice when we can, uh, we can all contribute. Yeah. That's really cool. And it, it's so cool too, because I feel like there are so many ways I know that you've got, you do so much from comedy to you're married to, I am. Yes. Okay. You got a, you got a wife and a mortgage. I do. Yeah, well, you're gonna do a lot of shit too. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. It ain't this altruistic and giving stuff. I got a friggin' mortgage. Keep working. <laughs> Pump it out. <laughs> yep, I'm experiencing that right as we speak. I've been. I, we just celebrated our five year anniversary. God bless you. God bless so, you. What's your, and what is your wife's name, if I may ask? Her name is Bianca. Bianca. Now, did she start? Did it start out as Beatrice and end up it, as Bianca? <laughs> is this a family thing? <laughs> Yeah, she was uh, she was Beatrice from uh, from Jersey, and then we right. went to Ferrara together, and then Perfect. we became Stefano and Bianca. So there you go. That That's was great. You just yeah. didn't stay away from Leopold and Loeb. Those are the two <laughs> you don't want to be. <laughs> Yeah, that's very true. But uh, but it, I was just going to say too about with you doing so many things. It's so cool that I feel like you're one of those people where people might see you in one thing and be interested. And then yeah. as they start to get to know you, it's just like, oh my gosh, look at all this other cool stuff that Adam does, which yeah, that's, that's that's actually one of the one of the reasons for the podcast as well is to have like a home base. Yeah. Because I would get people that, that come see me at, the, at a theater or, or a comedy club. And they're like, yeah. I didn't know you were stand up. I'm like, what did you think was going to happen here tonight? <laughs> did you think I was going to act out a scene with Edie Falco from the show? From Did you think Dennis Lee was going to show up and we were going to put out a fire? Did you think I was going to do burnout? <laughs> you know, where do you know me from? What did you think was going to happen? So that's part yes. of the reason for the podcast as well is to have like a home base. And, and it's nice to be able to, uh, to, uh, to grow that talk to me Tuesday family into a podcast and, uh, and, and, and have input from everybody else. It's like talking to Kevin. I mean, I, Kevin James did an episode with me and yeah. that was the first, uh, one of the, one of the early ones I did was with Kevin. Cause you know, I, I know him, you know, so, uh, the fans got all excited about the King of Queens episodes I've, I've done and, uh, yeah. mall cop the movie mall cop we were in together. So yeah. uh, they could share in it as, as well. So uh, it's nice. Yeah, that was a really cool episode too. It was awesome to see you guys talk. And I didn't know that you guys used to be roommates. So that was yeah. cool yeah. to find out and then find out <laughs> as I, I think this is helpful for everybody that's trying to break out and do something like you guys are doing, whether it's comedy or entertainment or whatever, where at one point in the podcast, you were like, yeah, I was freaking out like four times a day. I'm like, am I going to 
be able to do this. I can't afford toilet paper. And like, yeah. you're, you're struggling. And, and I think that that is helpful in a sense for other people that are going through that struggle now to hear that. And um, besides well, the big- looks back and romanticizes the past, you know, especially uh, when things, it's just easier to do, but it's like, you know, we were sitting there talking to each other about, Hey, remember when we did this? Remember we did yeah. candy camera together. We did a, uh, you know, remember we were in this movie together and then, you know, all the good old days, like we were a freaking mess. We went, <laughs> we had to get loaded to get on a plane. Cause we're both afraid of flying. Actually, he was more afraid <laughs> yes. than me and I couldn't get him. I couldn't let him get drunk by himself. So we were a freaking mess. We were nervous <laughs> as hell, you know? Oh God. Yeah. So it's... that was, and just being able to do that. It's like, I got a friend of mine now, he's dating a woman in, in, in her twenties, you know, mm -hmm. and he's like, I goes, I don't think it's going to work out. I go, it's not, <laughs> it's not going to work out. <laughs> he's like, why? I said, because you're at the point where you talk about your past and this lady doesn't have one. Stop it. You know, her past oh, my God. breakfast. <laughs> He's in her good old. What is she gonna? What regret does she have? Should have had the eggs. What regret does she have that she could share with you? Oh my God, that is so true. Yep, the uh, the communication there might be a little scrambled, just like the eggs. Yeah, but that's but to, to when you go and one of the other things about doing this pod. How long have you been doing yours? If I can ask. Uh, about three years. Okay, so uh, may I ask you? Because I'm I'm about ninety episodes in. In fact, this we I don't know when this is going to drop, but as we're recording this. Uh, this week's episode is uh, Clyde Phillips, who was the uh, uh, writer and showrunner for Dexter, uh, Nurse Jackie, um, and he's doing the Dexter reboot on Showtime. So there's a 10-episode limited series wow. of Dexter. So I spoke to him, um, and I think wow. production actually starts Thursday. So I spoke to him, uh, you know, just about that and writing and everything. Um, so I, I get to talk to people like that, and in doing this show, you discover a lot about yourself you know i i was in the mm -hmm. interviews i was like all right i'm, I'm telling this story again <laughs> i gotta get out of the house i gotta do it. <laughs> i gotta bring something new to the table so it's a way to uh, self-examine when you are using your life as fodder for a show yeah i i think that is spot on and that's something that happened to me too about maybe a year ago six months ago where i'm like I'm saying the same things here. So yeah. what I started to do, I don't do stand up anymore, but I was doing it up a little bit. Um, and then, you know, coronavirus, but I, I started writing more. And so yeah. at just like 30 minutes a day in the morning, I'll have my coffee, I'll start writing. And then things just start to come out and I start to think, have memories and, and just yeah. uh, have yeah, new fodder. Yeah, the same thing with you with the coffee alone in the morning, starting the day and I write, but a lot of, a lot of it starts like this. Fuck, 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 fuck. So I got about a half a page of that. Sometimes I spell it with a PH like Chaucer. So it looks like. <laughs> oh. I, I was going to, you know what? I've also been thinking about rebranding that writing time to yeah. thinking time, because right. I feel like when I say that I have to write for 30 minutes, that gives me, I feel like I have so much pressure on me that I got to be writing for 30 straight minutes. And sometimes right. I'm not, but if I'm not checking my phone, if I'm not talking to my lovely wife, Mm -hmm. If I'm not eating food, whatever, my mind can be there just thinking about different things, synapses is firing and, and allows me to just focus or be in this world that I can spill onto the page. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, I just look at these, because I got, I mean, look at this. I got the ramblings of a madman. I got stuff all over the house. I got different, I got different colors. Stefan, look at this. I got all kinds of shit here. And oh things, my God. different things. And it's just a way of just, if, you know, like you said, writing has to have a, if you look at I'm writing, there has to be a conclusion to it. There has yeah. to be an outcome to it. If you just like, I just think on the paper and that's why I use the colors just to organize it. And then as I'm doing the act of doing that, something pops up. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, and I'm at the point now where I'm trying to just allow the thoughts and allow those obsessions and allow the, those things to exist in their own space. I'll be over here. There's the crazy over there. And then while that's working, it's like there's a, I'm a football fan. So there's two kinds of head coaches. There's, there's the hands-on head coach and there's a walk-around head coach. Jimmy Johnson from the Cowboys was a walk-around head coach. Bill Parcells was a walk-around head coach. Basically, offensive coordinator, defensive special teams, and then mm -hmm. he just walks around and makes adjustments. So I, look, I try to do that with my thoughts. Like, all right, here's what I got to – here's this week's episode. 
Here's yeah. this stand-up show I got to do. Here's this pitch meeting I got to do. Here's the idea for the script that's spinning. And I just look at it as a heads-up display, and I visit little things and try not to get freaked out by this has to get done because I, I'm connected to the outcome. And once it's done, I don't have to, I don't have to obsess about it anymore. I'm going to obsess every anyway. But if mm. I do that, I allow the obsession to exist on its own and I, I don't have to embody it or identify with it. I love wow, that. I'm still fucking miserable, Stefan, but I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I, I think that's fantastic advice because sometimes I do get caught in the web of my own worries yeah. and things that I have going on. So being able to kind of just. Yeah, the suffering that. comes from the stories we tell ourselves. <laughs> as long as you're, if you, if you're aware of the story you're telling yourself about this event or about something that has to get done, that's where all your suffering lives. Yeah. You know, what is is different than what you think it is. Yeah. Oh, God. Wow. I didn't realize we were going to get this deep. This is beautiful. You want to talk about my dick? I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of deep. No. Um, well, this was, this was great. We're going to go into the life advice and answer some questions from sure. fans, Adam. Uh, but before we do, I usually like to center ourselves with an inspirational quote. And so I've got one, but I usually like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes that help them get inspired or get them through their dark days. So do you have any? Um, Not to put you on the spot. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. What am I, what am I reading now? That, uh... oh, oh, Yogi Berra. I got a book on Yogi Berra. I'm reading Yogi Berra had a great, a great quote um, because here's the thing is I'm a problem. I'm a guy. So it's a problem solving thing. My wife comes yeah. to me. What's the bottom line? What do I got to move? What do I got to paint? What do I got to buy? You know, what, what do you need me to do to fulfill my mission as a husband? So I'm very yeah. problem solving thing. Nice. So by not connecting, and that, that's where a lot of the aggravation comes from. I got to get it done because my father was the man of the house. This is the way the man of the house behaves. If it doesn't happen, I'm less of a man. All kinds of shit in my head. So Yogi Berra, his teacher, uh, when he was a kid, went up to Yogi. He got everything wrong on a test. And his teacher went up to him and said, Yogi, don't you know anything? And Yogi looked at his teacher and said, I'm not even suspicious. <laughs> That's really good. That actually helped me because I'm like, I'm because my in my head, I'm supposed to know everything. I'm supposed to be able to provide for my family and solve all their problems to make them happy because that's what a man does. So right. now, you know, it's like in my my subconscious story I'm telling myself is my wife comes to me like for something to do and I don't know how to do it, I feel less than. So she's like, Well, I came to you because you know how to do it. I'm like, I'm not even suspicious. So I can say that to myself make myself laugh and then move on with solving the problem. And sometimes solving the problem is finding someone that knows how to solve the problem. Oh yes, that's true. That's very true. Oh, I what do you it. got? So I've actually got a quote. It's not by Yogi Berra or a person at all. Actually, it's by a robot called inspire robot. Okay. And you so got to get out of the house more. All right. You're talking to friggin' appliances. You're changing your name. You're trying to get a new identity. And the, your next identity is going to be R2-D2 Stefano. And I don't want to see that happen. <laughs> oh, my God. You, oh, that, I was trying to tinker with it and, and play with it. I was like, babe, do you like Steph2-D2? And she's yeah. like, beep, boop, no. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll, I'll spit this one out. But this is actually, so InspireBot, it uses AI to take some of the most inspirational words known to man and woman okay. and just mash them together. So we'll see. If this one makes sense, sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss. Uh, Inspirebot this week says, a kick in the groin can distract policemen. Yeah. Next week, it's going to say, and you will do three to five mandatory. <laughs> to arrest and assaulting a police officer. Yeah, I feel like that one was a little miss. I think Inspirebot wants to incarcerate. Know, Inspirebot, are you a David Bowie fan? Ah, uh, I no. Okay. This is the way Bo used to write. He would take books and cut them up, and he would cut up sentences, phrases like Spirobot's doing, and he would paste them on, on different pieces of paper. Huh. Uh, called Mashup. And there's a couple of uh, documents. I, I got a Bowie book, too, I was reading, too. And he used to do that, too. So it was, it was the early Spirobot when you had to do it by hand. Oh, man. They should have a Bowie bot where you could just make up a song by mm -hmm. clicking, and it just takes some of the wisest lyrics. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Lyrics. Nice. I love it. Okay. Well, that one didn't make sense, but we're inspired so we can move on. I've got this first question. Mm. It's from our fan, Shauna. Thank you, Shauna. And she sent it, she found it on Reddit. So okay. somebody asks music suggestion for after surgery. 
Tomorrow I'm getting four of my wisdom teeth removed. I will be high and waiting for a few hours after the surgery. What music should I listen to? Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, but make a playlist and don't use and, and uh, omit the song Time. Because time starts with a bunch of clocks going off. So you'll get high, you'll be in a nice groove, and then time kicks in with all the clocks. You're like, fuck! And then you're back again. You don't want that. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, take that out. <laughs> so Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, take the song Time out of the playlist. The whole thing works great. Um, that, that, that's a good uh, high song. What do you got? Oh, that, oh God, I'm sorry. What does the robot say about get music to get out of? The, the robot said, uh, well, it was still on the policeman thing. It said the discography of the police. So, yeah, but you're high. Okay. You're high. Here's the thing about uh, after wisdom teeth taken out and you're high, you yeah. don't want ska or reggae. You don't want, you don't want to be bopping. You want just, all right, chill. You know, you don't That's want to be, true. you know. That's, you know what? I would listen to either the uh, Adam's Spirits in the material. Well, and then you're going to be popping your head and then the pain's going to come back. Oh, that's true. Exactly. I, you know what? I would listen to because I think the thing, the ampler, or I'm sorry, laughter gets amplified. Mm -hmm. So maybe listen to 30 Minutes You'll Never Get Back with Adam Ferrara and it's, friends. Well, yeah, I don't I, listen, listen to it after the anesthesia. I don't want you laughing and being in pain and, and connecting your bad feeling to my podcast. I don't need this. I need listeners. Wow, so, you've really thought this through. This is great. This I haven't is, thought this through. I got, I got a wife, and she eats every day, Steph. And I got, I got, I got to get listeners, and I got to get more money. So let, let's they've got to be quality listeners. They can't yes. be chewing their teeth on it and then getting yes. or injuries. Okay, that's perfect. I was gonna say also just maybe some sleep sounds or something like that, where it's just the, the waves of the ocean, or maybe yeah, just like a nice that, campfire. You're gonna have to pee. Oh crap! Okay, maybe, maybe a campfire. Yeah. Okay. You can do the campfire. It depends. Depends on 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 what your your memories, because these are also going to trigger memories when you're high too. So it's going to open a door of do you have mm. nice memories of the woods or do you have like I couldn't believe you had a shovel and duct tape. Thank God I saw it before I got in the car. You know. Oh my God. Yeah, that's very true. You don't want to. That's true. That is door. dangerous. Yeah. yeah. I would say go back to this. Actually helps me. It helps during football season to sleep. Like I'll listen yeah. to uh, sports radio or I'll listen to podcasts about football grown men bitching about a game i've already seen and you know <laughs> but just that comfort thing so when you're in that high place go back to something that brings you comfort like if you were a kid and you were a deadhead oh. listen to the dead listen to something that has a nice memory connected to it rather than taking a chance on putting something on that might jar a memory you don't want to have that's true and for the love of god Wherever you're listening, make sure you have a premium subscription because if Spotify is going to hit you with an ad about Squarespace, you're yeah. going to be in for a loop. Ruins your whole buzz. That's the whole theory behind that the song "Time" in there. I'm like, Meh. not when mm. I'm not when I'm chilling. Good point. Okay, perfect. I feel like we nailed that one, so we'll move on. This next segment, this mm. is called positive spin because a lot of times when we are confronted with problems, we right. just think of the negative. So yeah. I wanted to create a segment where we start to think immediately of the positive things of yeah. bad things that could happen so that we think positively. Okay. All right. So Adam, this one, this one's for you actually. So for yeah. this positive spin, th this is what happens. I don't know how it happens. Maybe the city of LA is like, Hey, we're not allowed to, you, you can't drive a 1970 Buick Electra 225 anymore. Wanna you bet? have to drive. <laughs> This is where you load it and you grease them and be like, this yeah. says I can. Yeah. <laughs> it's you have to drive a Prius. And so now from now on, you Adam Ferrara have to drive Ooh. a Prius. Right. So I, any I, positives? The positive is it will force me to get a bike. <laughs> Um, you can you can feel like you're in Ferrara. That's, that's right. beautiful. I, I, I want a, an orange and green bike that's too small for me named Seabiscuit. That's what <laughs> that that's is better it. than a Prius. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's not the electric car. It's the Prius. The Prius just they, they they aren't they aren't fun. You know, some electric car. You know, I had a couple of Teslas that were. I had a. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a. Here's the thing about the electric cars for me is that they're a necessity, and that's the way we're going. And I understand there's a place for them, but they're not. Right. Cars for me, like that old Buick, you know, if you guys don't know, yeah. I, I had a 70 deuce and a quarter. I had that. Buick. Cars are, were alive then. You know, it's got, it, 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 it breathes air. It's got fluid. Right. It's got, it, it, you know, it, it bleeds, you know, it breathes air and breathes. So it's like, a, there's a lot of moving parts in the car and you're in it together. You know, when yeah. you're in it, you know, electric car, not a lot of moving parts and it's just, you know, mm. 
it's, it's like taking inspirational quotes from a, from a robot. Sure, that's <laughs> the way it's going, but you're going to end up kicking a policeman in the groin. You're going to blame an inanimate object. I think you might be right, man. The Tesla, it has the autopilot, but it might accidentally drive into a cop's groin. Yeah, and then that's you're not at- driving. That that's transportation. That's that's I don't want I don't want a I don't want an appliance. I want a car. Oh God. That's that's true. The car has the soul in it, I feel. Yes. You know what I'm really sad about too? All of my Italian relatives, they would tell me too, because I don't know how to drive a stick shift. Mm-hmm. I've wanted to my whole life. Okay. My wife, her her whole family lives in Brazil. So right. it's all stick shift country over there, yeah. stick shift in Italy. And I can't on drive Italy. one. Those people aren't messing around. Oh my God. No, no, man. Even on the bikes. Holy shit. Yeah. They're just all over the place. Oh my God. I don't, I got some stories over there that are very boring, but I'll save it for another time. Anyway. So, okay. Some positives, getting a bike from the Prius. Beautiful. Right. I feel like Nailed it. All right. Last question. And then this is going to be the end of the podcast, Adam. Sure. All right. So um, this is from Reddit found by our fan, Kyle. Thank you, Kyle. It says advice on how to get a lazy sister to do dishes. Me and my sister still live at home. I love to cook mainly for myself. I always hate coming home from work and wanting to cook and have to take two to three times longer to Mm. clean and do the dishes than it would take for me to cook a simple meal for myself. I sometimes skip a meal because I just look at it and feel burnt out, especially after a long day of work, which isn't ideal for me. Mm. She will cook for our parents, but won't really wash the pans right away, which obviously takes more time because they have caked on by the time me or my mom gets to it. This frustrates me and my mom. Okay. Help. Oh, she, so she got to get the, she got to get this, the sister to do the dishes or do the pots and the pans. The, I think just the dishes in general. She's just making the dinner. And here's the, what I would do. Say, listen, here's what we'll do. I, I understand you don't want to do the dishes. There's more dishes than there's pots and pans. If you do the pots and pans, I'll do the dishes. Get her to commit to that. And then let her do the pots and pans. And then you buy paper plates. <laughs> I almost spit my water out on that one. That's it. Excellent idea. Uh, you know, I feel, I don't know how it works in the Ferrara household, but in the Satani household, right. the rule is, Thou that does not cook cleans. Yeah. So it seems like there's a little bit of uh, there's there's some misorganization and miscommunication going on here because he likes to cook for himself, his greedy right. little self. Right. Sister cooks for the rest of the family, but then doesn't clean. So mm. I feel like maybe if you talk with her and be like, hey, sis, I don't know, maybe you load something up. Be like, can right. you cook for me as well? If I'm not there, save it for me. And right. then I will do the dishes when I get home. And then mm. you don't have to cook for yourself. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, it's like I said, depend what you figure out what you want and figure out who you're working with, then figure out how to get it. So what do you want? You don't want to cook your oh, look, I'll do the dishes. You got to do this, this, and this. Or if you do yeah. this, I'll do it. It's a, everything's a negotiation. Everything's a freaking negotiation. So oh, it doesn't, man. it doesn't really matter. You know, just yeah. figure out what you want and then figure out how to get there. And then be mindful of the people that are in that puzzle with you. You know, that's right. Because you can, don't look at someone to change because they're not going to change. How right. can you work with this person? Yeah. You know, my wife looks at me like, look, she knows she's got, I know my, I know my wife is going to ask me a question three times. It's going to be three times. So first time is yes. Are you sure? Right. Then she'll rephrase and ask again. So I don't get upset. The fourth time I'm like, Hey, we, we've done this, but I, but I, you know, the, I know that's just it. I'm going to have to answer a question three different times. Don't get angry. This is just what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Same you know, with my, my wife. wife. My wife knows with me, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to come home. She, I'm, she's going to tell me something that I'm not going to hear the first time. Or I'm going to tell her I hear it, but it didn't register the first time. So she'll tell me again. Yeah. I've oh. told my wife to leave a recording just the first yeah. time. So she doesn't have to waste her breath. So the first three times yeah. she'll ask it. And, and don't I, look like if, if you did, no, this is just who she is. My honey, you ready? Yeah. No, she's not ready. That means she's got to pee. So work around it. I got a little chair right by the front door. Cause that's where I'm going to sit with the dog. When she tells me she's ready. That's another 15 minutes, honey. You ready? Yeah. I just got to I just got us 10 minutes. And then after, honey, you're ready? After that 10 minutes is, yeah, I'm ready, which means then I'm going to pee. And then I look at the dog, and she's like, yeah, she's got another two minutes. The dog knows, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. The dog. That's it. 
I forgot about that. You know, that happened with us too until quarantine. I, mm -hmm. I forgot about that little that fun time, the 30 extra minutes of yeah. getting ready. But it is what it is. All yeah. right. Well, fantastic. Well, that's the end of the podcast. I wanted to, Adam, first, thank you so much for joining. Oh, thanks awesome for having me, my friend. You were fun. I, I enjoyed talking to you, and I really appreciate you listening to the podcast. I'm very proud of it. If you guys uh, want to check me out, it's the Adam for our podcast, 30 Minutes You'll Never Get Back, wherever you get your podcast. Talk to me Tuesdays are Tuesday night, 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Go to my website, click the link, and join us. Feel free to send us an email if you want to uh, uh, ask us to get a guest on or have a question. Uh, and I thank you for your time, Stephen, Stefan, and Stefano. Oh, it. that's oh, you got all three. Thank you, thanks, and grazie. So I right. really appreciate it. Right and uh, and also your your new album. Um, yes. It's scary in here. It's scary in here. That was great. Recorded live at the Gotham Comedy Club. You can get that wherever you get your comedy albums. It's awesome. on Spotify. Uh, Sirius is running it a lot. Uh, Pandora. So Pandora. Yeah. And thanks for listening to that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Adam, and uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Be well. You do the same, my friend. All Stay right. Safe. Thank you so much. Take care.